Well, praise the Lord, here we are, live on the internet, on Facebook, live. I tell you what, the miracle of modern technology, you gotta love it. <laughs> this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and we are simulcasting both to the Faith and Victory Church page and to the Word of Faith Ministries page. And so, whether you're joining us at either location, uh, welcome you to tonight's service. This is our regular Wednesday night service at Faith and Victory Church. Pastor asked me to uh, kind of sit in for him as he's out of town, and we appreciate his ability to do that and uh, take a little time around the holidays. Praise the Lord. We've got some exciting things here in store tonight, I believe, for you. Uh, we're going to be talking about watching your attitude. <laughs> so if you need an attitude adjustment, You've come to the right place. Praise the Lord. Let's talk about some things that we've got going on. First of all, the building fund is still available for you to contribute if you'd like to at this address. If you you know, have already contributed or you are led in a different direction, at least share this link with uh, as many people as you can through email, through Facebook, through Twitter, whatever social media you have access to. This link right here, uh, fvc.org slash building, will take you to our uh, building fund opportunity. And it is an opportunity because for Faith and Victory Church, we have not have, had a permanent physical building uh, ever, basically. Uh, we've had buildings that we've leased and so forth. Uh, we were in one facility for 30-plus years <laughs> Uh, before getting kicked out summarily, <laughs> praise the Lord, but we are available still in the area of the Piedmont Triad, currently meeting at New Life Family Church on Sundays uh, and virtually over the internet on Wednesdays. We also have Tuesday night prayer, uh, which you can get to by invitation only, uh, so you need to uh, send a request to office at fvc.org to participate in that. Uh, and then we also have uh, the uh, Wednesday night services I mentioned that we're doing tonight. Now, first of all, let me also give you an opportunity to send in your tithes and offerings this evening. And we're going to pray, and uh, I'm going to believe for those folks that are members of Faith and Victory Church that want to contribute their tithes you can use this address right here, Square Cash, which is Dollar Faith Victory Church. You would send it to or PayPal donations at fvc.org. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come this evening and to fellowship around your word. And Father, to give our financial wherewithal to bless and to um, empower the ministry to do what it's called to do. Those of us that are members at Faith and Victory Church, we are tithers, and so we give our tithe every opportunity when we have increase to the church. And we thank you that the tithe is meant for the local church. And so we give that in faith, believing that as tithers, our needs are supernaturally met, and we are blessed with the tithers' blessing. And I just thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you'd like to contribute, go ahead and do that. As I said, this is our regular Wednesday night service, so let's get right into the Word of God this evening. Watch your attitude. I like that title. That's the short title. We've also got a longer title. <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, the subtitle, I guess you'd call it. These are steps to take to keep your heart and mind right before God. That's too long to fit on a tape. <laughs> you know, the old style tapes. I know we don't do that anymore. We use MP3s or CDs or any other form, but not the tapes anymore. But I tell you what, we used to struggle to get the title on those tapes. But praise the Lord. Steps to take to keep your heart and mind right before God. Listen, I woke up this morning. Let me just share a little personal testimony with you. I woke up this morning, and I tell you what. The blessings of God, the uh, the things that the Lord has done in my life, I was just overwhelmed 
by how much the Lord has blessed me personally and my family specifically. And I got to thinking about all the things that have happened over these many, 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 many years. I was born again on April the 6th of 1969. Now, many of you weren't even born back then. (laughs) But praise the Lord, that's when I was born again. I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now, I was raised in Southern Baptist Church (laughs) as an infant. I came into the church, and I went to Sunday school, and I went to Fort Caswell, and I went to all the events that you could go to as a young Baptist boy. And uh, so I'd always heard of Jesus. But I knew that I needed to receive him personally. And so I just meditated on that. And one Sunday morning, I went to my dad. He was getting ready for church that Sunday morning. And uh, I went to dad and I said, Dad, I'm going to go down front and shake the preacher's hand this morning. And he kind of grinned. <laughs> Being a good Baptist, he knew what I meant. He said, you are? I said, yep. And he said, well, what, you, what exactly does that mean to shake the preacher's hand? I said, well, you know, I want to receive Jesus. He said, well, why? I said, because I want to be born again. I want to go to heaven. I want to be sure that, that you know, I'm right before the Lord. He says, well, that's good. What do you believe? And I kind of caught me, you know, a little, it took me back a little bit because I, he knew what I believed. I'd been raised in the Baptist church. I'd believed what they told me. <laughs> but he said, what do you believe? I said, well, I believe, you know, uh, Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that that uh, uh, He's God in the flesh. I, I I receive Him as my Lord. I believe God raised Him from the dead. And He just grinned. He says, "Okay." Now, many years later, many many years later, in a charismatic Bible study, they started singing the song. It was on a whatever day. Somebody touched me, and I went to the Lord. I said, "Lord, I don't remember when I got born again." This was many many years later, and. Uh, He said, uh, he just gave me almost like a little mini vision, M-I-N-I, mini vision. You know, not that I had an open vision, but in my heart, in my spirit, I saw myself standing there before my dad saying that I believe that Jesus was Lord and I believe God raised him from the dead. He said, right there is where you got born again, in my dad's bedroom before the Sunday morning service. We hadn't even made it to church. (laughs) He said, that's when you got born again. Well, later on, I did that day. I went down and shook the preacher's hand. had me a good time. And he turned around and, you know, put me before the congregation and said, how many want to vote Bill in today as a member? And I thought, boy, I sure hope they vote for me. (laughs) And they did, praise the Lord. And I joined that little Baptist church, First Baptist Church in Denton. And, uh, you know, but I just thought it was funny that I got born again in my dad's bedroom mom and dad get ready for sunday morning service and so it was on a sunday (laughs) that somebody touched me so i got to sing that song you know exuberantly after that praise the lord i just wanted to share that with you that was one of the things i thought about this morning when i woke up praise god i'm not going to hell amen now we're talking about keeping your attitude right that'll help straighten your attitude right out you're going to heaven hallelujah if you're born again. Amen. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I just got, that just made my morning. I got to thinking about that. I thought, well, praise God. Then I got to thinking about that I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. November 10th, 1973. Spoke in other tongues. Hallelujah. Received the empowerment to go and witness. And oh, my, 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 that changed my life tremendously. And so I was rejoicing over that this morning. Then I got to thinking about how I was in the hospital when I was in college in 1977. They didn't know what to do with me. Had welts all over my body. Had a terrible high fever. Did not know what I had. Had no idea of how to treat me. But praise the Lord, I believe God and got out of that situation, out of that hospital stay. And then here about three and a half years ago or thereabouts, I was in a situation where the doctor said I had a week to live. It was it just wrote me off, basically. Said, there's no, nothing we can do for you. You're going to die. Believed and received my healing. So here I am, born again, spirit-filled, healed by the Lord. 
Then not to mention that my wife Belinda got healed supernaturally of postpartum cardiomyopathy uh, when our son Benjamin was born, which, by the way, they said that we couldn't have a child, weren't able to conceive a child, but we believed God, and we wrote up a heavenly grant, and we believed for her to get pregnant. She did. But then she had postpartum cardiomyopathy. They said she had to have a heart transplant. But praise the Lord, God healed her supernaturally, and she got out of that hospital, and we were able to raise Ben together. Hallelujah. Woo! I tell you, the blessings of God. And God has supernaturally blessed us all the way down the line. And, uh, you know, we were able to find a good church, Faith and Victory Church. And we've been members of that church for, oh my, 30, 33 years or thereabouts. You know, no, no cruise-o-matic <laughs> situation for us. We've been faithful members of Faith and Victory Church that whole time. The blessings of God that we have a pastor, Pastor Ed and Pastor Janie, that are preaching and teaching the uncompromising word of faith, refuse to preach anything but the uncompromising word of faith message. Hallelujah. Blessings of God. And I got to thinking about all these things, and I just thought, you know, praise God, I've got so much to be thankful for. I got so much to lift my spirits. And I was just humming and singing and having me a good time. And I did a radio program, and I talked about it on the radio program today, about the blessings of God, about having a good attitude because of the blessings of God. And that's what led me to this study tonight. Amen. And I don't think it's going to be a very long, involved study, but I think it will be a blessing to cover some of these scriptures very quickly. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Now, if you've got problems with uh, osteoporosis in your bones, your bones getting dried out and, and porous, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I tell you, you ought to have a merry heart. You ought to be up. I've had people tell me, oh, Dr. Bill, you're always so happy. You know, at work, they used to tell me that all the time. Why? Nothing ever seems to get you down. You're always so up. Well, I have a merry heart. And I notice it says, merry heart. Okay? You are a spirit, which is your heart, your inner internal man, your spirit man. You are a spirit. You have a soul, my will and emotions. You live in a physical body. Okay? So, we're not talking about necessarily always having a merry mind. Now, you should. That's part of your attitude. But... It's always coming from the heart. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So we need to look to our heart. Look to the real you. The you that's the real you inside of you. <laughs> See, I look in the mirror, or like right now, I'm looking into a camera that has a, a screen, and I see my face. I see, you know, my beard. <laughs> I see that outward body. That's not the real me. That's my body. But it's not the real me. I am a spirit. I'm in here. The real me is in here. And my spirit should be merry. My spirit should be happy. My spirit should be loving and kind. Hallelujah. And that should come out and show up on my face. Amen? And it ought to bless and encourage my mind. I renew my mind to the Word of God. And part of that is watching my attitude, keeping my attitude straight. You start finding yourself down in the dumps, encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what in Psalms David said, I encouraged myself. Now notice, I, the human spirit, I encouraged myself in the Lord. That's your heart. That's your soul. That's your attitudes. That's your mental realm, okay? You can encourage yourself. Start talking to yourself. I know a lot of you think, what? <laughs> Talk to myself? Yeah. Tell yourself, hey, soul, bless the Lord. Psalm 103, 1 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He's telling his soul, his mind, will, and emotions. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Well, that's everything. That's the spirit, the soul, and the body. All that is within me, bless his holy name. 
Amen. We ought to be blessing the Lord. Why? Because Psalm 28, 7. <laughs> Psalm 28, 7 that says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. Oh, the Lord is my strength. I tell you, I quoted that all the time that I was believing to get stronger. I'm stronger now than I was back then, hallelujah, when I got out of the hospital. But I'm getting stronger every day still. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. Your spirit man ought to be greatly rejoicing. Oh, but Dr. Bill, I don't feel like greatly rejoicing. Well, then encourage yourself in the Lord. Tell yourself, hey, you know, greatly rejoice, the, you down and out kind of guy. <laughs> Grab a hold of your attitude. And with my song, I will praise him. Now, I was reading some of these scriptures, and I thought about uh, Brother Nathan Taylor, our song leader at Faith and Victory Church, always encouraging us to sing, always encouraging us to praise the Lord. Amen. And we ought to praise the Lord. With my song, I will praise it. Well, you can do that even if you're not at church. You can just start singing to the Lord yourself in your private prayer time, in your private meditation time. Just sing unto the Lord. I sing all kinds of things. I sing when I'm driving in my car. I like to sing some of the old, old Christian songs. Like, uh, you know, and when I say old... Uh, it may not be old to some, but it is. Uh, the second chapter of Acts, love, peace, joy. You know, some of the songs that talk about lifting yourself up as you meditate on the things of God. Amen? Some of the songs from David Ingalls. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. A brand new creation in him. Hallelujah. Start encouraging yourself in the scripture. Psalm 106, 1, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Hallelujah. God is good. That's a revelation, folks. God is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Now, listen, you could read about God's mercies. Hallelujah. His mercies endure forever. His healing mercies. I lean hard on his healing mercies. That's what got me out of the hospital is his healing mercies. Hallelujah. Now listen, let me give you a little, a little insight into mercy. Mercy is what you need when you didn't do so well personally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you were doing everything right, you wouldn't need mercy. Uh-oh, think about that. Let's meditate on that a minute. A little Selah moment. If you were doing every single thing right, you wouldn't need mercy. But let's face it. There are times we miss it. Well, that's all right. Lean heavily on the mercy of the Lord. Lean heavily on his mercy. Because he's full of mercy and his mercy endures forever. Woo, I appreciate his mercies. Ooh, amen. All right, Psalm 5610. In God will I praise his word. Think about this. In the Lord I will praise his word. I love praising the word of God. And you say, what do you mean by that? Well, look into the Word and look at what the Word of God says despite what any man is saying, despite what any social uh, movement is saying, whatever. If people are calling good evil and evil good, I look at what the Word of God says, and I say what the Word says, and I praise His Word. I encourage myself in His Word. In what God says. I try to think God's thoughts. You say, Dr. Bill, that's awfully presumptuous. Thinking God's thoughts. Well, he said we have the mind of Christ. And if we've got the mind of Christ, we ought to be using it to think with. Well, how do we do that? We get into his word. Let me tell you, God's thoughts are in his word. God's position is in his word. God's methodology is is in his word. You see what I'm saying? Everything that has to do with the Lord and with his spirit and the operation of his spirit and, and how he thinks is all in his word. He never contradicts his word. So, let's read this verse again. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. Hallelujah. These are all things you can do to keep your attitude right. 
Verse 103, uh, Psalm 103, verse 8. We talked about verses 1 through 3. This is verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Woo, I love that. Plenteous in mercy. Like I said, I lean heavily on the mercy of God. Amen. In my day in, day in and day out life, my daily life, I lean on the mercies of God. You say, Dr. Bill, are you, are you doing that badly? <laughs> are you missing it that bad? Well, I don't have to think about that. I can lean on the mercies of God. I'm not intentionally going out and doing anything wrong, but you know what? I'm not sitting there thinking, oh, I missed it here and I missed it there and I missed it there. See, that's, that'll give you a bad attitude right there. You'll always be morose. You'll always be down. You'll always be thinking, where did I miss it? Well, lean on the mercies of God. Hallelujah. Now, that's not a license to sin. Let me tell you what Brother Kenneth Copeland says. You're going to sin without a license. <laughs> that's what 1 John 1, 9 is for, is confess your sin. He's faithful and just to cleanse us of our sin, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, to forgive our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. I mean, God's got provision if you miss it. Praise the Lord. But his mercies, his mercies are plenteous. Let's keep going. Psalm 104, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Praise and thanksgiving go hand in hand. Amen. Let me say that again. Praise and thanksgiving go hand in hand. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. See, that's where I found myself this morning. Just thankful to the Lord. Blessing his name for everything he's done in my life. Thankful for what he's done. He's been so faithful to me. He's been so faithful to my family. He's blessed us so much. You say, well, Dr. Bill, that's good. I, I'm glad that you're so blessed. Well, guess what? God is no respecter of persons. He's blessing me. He'll bless you too. All you got to do is get on the word, use your faith, lean on the mercies of God, watch your attitude like we're talking about here, and put yourself in a position to be blessed. Hallelujah. Colossians 3.15 And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your heart, and be thankful. Once again, keeping your attitude right, being thankful, operating in the love of God, looking at people through eyes of love, through the eyes of the Lord. Oh, God wants to bless folks. He wants to help folks. He don't want to tear people down. That's not his purpose. So keep your attitude right. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. Be gracious yourself. He's slow to anger. You be slow to anger. Hallelujah. Uh, Colossians 3.15, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called to one body, and be ye thankful. Hebrews 2.12, Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Here we go, Nathan. <laughs> in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. When you do get together, you know the word of God says, assemble yourselves together. Uh particularly in these last of the last days. We should not neglect the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much more, so much more, so much more as we see the day approaching. Well, I don't know about you, but I see the day approaching. So we ought to be getting together as much as possible. And when we do, sing praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah for what he's done. Psalm 116, 17, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Psalm 95, 2, let us come together before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Now, you know, I'm not the world's best singer. Hallelujah. <laughs> I do the best I can. But you know what? I can make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. And so I make a joyful noise. I do whatever I can when it comes time to sing in a service. But praise the Lord, I give it my best shot. And if you keep your attitude right, you can give it your best shot and just go ahead and sing out. Hallelujah. Uh, let's keep going here. R uh, Romans 15, 6. That you may be of one mind and one mouth that you are... Uh, let me read that again that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God 
even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me give you a little insight here into speaking the same thing. The uh, Greek word is homo logio. Homo the same, logio word. We speak the same thing. As the body of Christ, we ought to be speaking the same thing. Well, what are we to be speaking? We're to be speaking the word of God. We speak the same thing. We speak God's word. We say what God says. And we all get together in agreement. Where, there, where two or three of us are gathered together in agreement, whoo, hallelujah, he's there. And we speak the same thing together. We sing psalms, you know, spiritual songs unto the Lord. Romans 15, 6. That you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, when we get together as a church, with one mind and one mouth, we are together in, to, in this. You know, the old saying, we're, we're in this together, hallelujah. Well, we are. We're in this together, worshiping the Lord, praising the Lord, keeping our attitude straight. 1 Corinthians 6.20, For you are bought with a price. I tell you what, my brethren, this is something that most Christians don't ever even think about. You are bought. You are bought with a price. God bought you with the blood of Jesus. Now, he did it to redeem you. He did it for your salvation. But I want you to think about the fact that you're purchased with a price, with a dear, dear, dear price. And it says, you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You belong to him. Now notice, your spirit and your body. See again, you are a spirit, you have a mind, will and emotions, your soul, you live in a physical body. But this body, guess what? This body is something you're going to have with you eternally. You say, oh no, Dr. Bill, no, 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 I don't want this body eternally. <laughs> well, don't worry, it'll be transformed. In a moment, a twinkling of an eye, it'll be transformed into a heavenly body. It won't have any blemishes. It won't be, in my case, overweight. Hallelujah. You know, but guess what? It's going to be this body. He bought this body. He cares about this body. He cares about your body. You know, that's why he doesn't want it sick. That's why he wants every cell and every organ of your body functioning perfectly as he designed it to function. That's why he sent Jesus to bear your sicknesses and carry your diseases. And by his stripes you were, past tense, healed. 1 Peter 2.24 All of that's available because God purchased you. You're a purchased possession. And since he did, you ought to lean on that. You ought to say, Lord, you purchased me. You purchased my body. You purchased my spirit. I am in, in complete. I am completely yours. And so I know that the mercies of God are stretched out toward me in the area of healing because you want to take care of this body. Have you ever had something that you cherished? I'm talking about some physical something. You know, I love cameras. And I am very particular about my cameras. I'm very particular about my computers. I take care of them. And, you know, I, it's like I rub on them, <laughs> all this, because I, I care for my possessions. I want to keep them in good shape. I want to make sure they don't get abused. All of those things. Some people are that way about their cars. You know, these guys that are all into hot rods and so forth. Oh, they love those cars. Well, guess what? Those are your possessions, so you want to keep them in good condition. Well, it's the same thing with the Lord. He wants to keep your body in good condition. So that's why he'll heal you. Amen. You are the heel to the Lord, and you need to stand for that. Don't let that slide out of you know, your, your view, your sight. Keep yourself focused on the fact that you are God's possession, and that includes your body. Hallelujah. This is all part of keeping your attitude straight. Amen? All right. You're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which both are God's. And then Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing. Now, careful here 
means anxiety or care. As a matter of fact, this verse is translated in other translations, have no anxiety about anything. There's a lot of people that are worry, 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 worry all the time. My mom, oh my goodness, my mom was one of the world's worst for this. She worried about everything. She worried and worried and worried. And she thought, oh, I know he's going to get in a car wreck. Oh, I know this is going to happen. Oh, I know that's going to happen. And she was just always worried. Well, that is exactly opposite of what this scripture is saying. Don't have anxiety. Don't have worry or care about anything. You say, well, Dr. Bill, surely we ought to worry about something. No, I refuse to worry. Worry is not part of my natural state. <laughs> I'm not a worry at all. Used to bug my mom all the time. She told me one time, she said, you don't worry about anything. I said, that's right. And I thought to myself, by decision, on purpose, I don't worry about anything. And I tell you, being raised the way I did, where she worried all the time, That'll get on you if you're not careful. I had to get that out of my life. And so I don't worry about anything. I don't fret. It just doesn't bother me. This is all part of keeping your attitude right. Don't worry about anything. But, but, in everything. Now notice it doesn't say for everything. I heard a lot of people even quote it that way. Be careful for nothing but for everything. In prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. No, no, no. It's not what it says. In everything, in the midst of whatever is happening in your life, you ought to be praying, you ought to be in supplication, and you ought to be thanking God that your requests are made known unto him and that he answers prayer. Realize that when you pray, your requests, if they are in line with the word of God, if they are scriptural, your requests are going to be met. Jesus said that we can believe and receive anything if it's in line with the Word of God. Now, like Pastor likes to point out, if you're after somebody else's wife and you go to pray it in that direction, that is a fruitless prayer. That's against the Word of God. That's a good example of what not to do. Amen? And besides that, we don't uh, desire another man's wife, that's against the scripture in and of itself. This goes back to what we were talking about, praising his word and being in, in love with him and in love with his word and, and making his thoughts your thoughts. You don't even think that way. doesn't cross your mind. Amen. That's the way you ought to be. That's your attitude. These are all things for keeping your heart and your mind right before God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if you'll do this, it will change your attitude. It'll straighten your string, as the saying goes, the old country saying. He needs his string straightened. <laughs> well, you can straighten your string by confessing the Word of God, by standing on the Word of God, by living according to the Word of God, and it will change your attitude. I'm telling you, I have enjoyed today. Because I started it off thinking about all the blessings of God. I tell you, it brought a tear to my eye. I was on radio and I was just almost bawling. I was so happy. Now, I know that sounds a little funny. But I was just so excited about everything that God has done. And after I got off the radio program, after I quit recording it, I just started praising God. And I just said, Lord, I am so thankful for everything you've done in my life. All the blessings. And then I got to thinking, I'm sitting in a condo. It's paid for. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm looking at radio equipment and video equipment, and it's all paid for. Hallelujah. He meets my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm, I'm enjoying the blessings of God. You say, well, that's good for you, Dr. Bill, but that's not the way it is for me. Well, put your faith out there. Start confessing the word. This all didn't happen overnight. Like I said, I got born again in 1969, filled with the Holy Ghost 1973, you know, ordained in the ministry in 1977. I've been around a while. <laughs> and I've been in the Word of God for a while. But you know what? God's timing. God will just continue to put you in a place. I love what the Scripture says. Pastor Buddy Harrison pointed this out many years ago. He said there's a Scripture that talks about 
a man's gift will make room for him. And he related it this way. Whatever your anointing is, whatever your gifting is, it will make room for you. And all through my life, all the things that God has me doing, I just kind of fell into it, so to speak, in the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit because he used my abilities and my interest to do what he wants to do. And I'm telling you what, when you're in that situation, whoo, hallelujah, it is a happy and joyful life. It is being right in the middle of the spout where the glory comes out. Amen? <laughs> hallelujah. So I trust you got something out of this tonight. I believe that it's been a blessing to you. And I just trust that it, the, the, <laughs> I had a minister tell me one time, Brother Bill, the spirit of mirth is on you. <laughs> And I had to laugh at that, but I knew what he meant. I just I just get happy. And the spirit of earth was on me. I like that. It's just a funny way of putting it. But it caught my attention. I said, yeah, you know, I like that. I The spirit of earth. I'll take that, brother. Hallelujah. And so I just trust the spirit of earth gets on you tonight. You just get happy. Put a smile on your face. And enjoy the things of God. Amen. Well, listen, join us for our next service which will be this coming Sunday at New Life uh, Church, New Life Family Church. And uh, I tell you, it's on Ken Coy Road, which I know is an unusual name, Ken Dash Coy Road in Jamestown, North Carolina. Service starts at 1230. Come on out and join us physically. We're assembling ourselves together. And enjoy the Word of God as Pastor delivers it. I believe it'll be a blessing. It'll be Easter Sunday. You need to be in church on Easter, I tell you. Uh, that's a time that the whole world's attention is on the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Amen. So we need to get together and just praise the Lord for that. So come out and join us. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God.